Hello, this is the ASMR Medic. I hope you're well. Today we're going to be looking at amino acids and ways in which we can memorize their structure and properties. Okay, so going into this video, I'll be assuming a certain level of knowledge about organic chemistry, really. Uh, I'm not really going to go over types of bonding or certain functional groups, whether that be methyl groups, hydroxyl groups, amino groups, the main ones that we're concerned with, ar aromatic groups I suppose as well, the ones that are the, are the main concern when we're talking about amino acids. I'm just gonna, This is purely about the structure of the 20 amino acids that we have, or that concern human life really, uh, and the properties of those, uh, and sort of the, tri ticks, uh, the tricks and tips that we can use to um, to memorize them, really. So we'll just get straight into that. Um, the first one, well, we we'll start off with um, the nonpolar, nonpolar hydrophobic uh, amino acids, and we'll use this sort of alpha alpha for for uh, amino acids. Uh, and these really are those the, the simplest the simplest ones. Um, this is this term here uh, is also refers, referred to as aliphatic. Oh. Aliphatic. Uh, the first one is glycine. Uh, which has the letter G. And this really is the most simple. So we have our, just up here, maybe we'll draw the general structure. So we have the central carbon, the alpha carbon, with a hydrogen group, a carboxylic group, which we'll do in light blue, the Also have an R group, which we'll do. Maybe we'll just do it in pink. A bit garish. Let's do it. Let's do it in in purple. Sort of light purple. The R group, uh, and the R group, as you probably know, is the variable one. And so in glycine, the reason it's the most uh, simple. This is H. We'll do these just in in white for now. But its R group is just a hydrogen. So we'll write down. Do that in pink. Uh, most simple amino acid, uh, and it's optically. Just remembering that the most simple one is glycine. We'll try and come up with some easier way of remembering things though, I suppose. Uh, the next one, the second most simple, I suppose, is let's keep it all in capital, shall we? It's alanine, which is A as its shorthand. Again, the standard backbone to it. It's R group, it's just a methyl group. So you can see how these two are the most simple with an H and a methyl group. So they're actually two quite similar 
amino acids, just a methyl group of alanine. And the tip that it says on the screen I'm using is that, um, I'm not so, not so sure how useful this is, but it, because it's so simple, um, just like A is the start of the alphabet. But maybe that's a little bit confusing because maybe glycine should be the start of the alphabet because it's the most simple. But, you know, alanine is equally simple, so right at the start, A, just one single methyl group. Another aliphatic one. In total, maybe we should put up here the aliphatics. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, six aliphatic amino groups. The non-polar hydrophobic. We're doing it like that. Maybe it's a little bit thicker. So our third aliphatic amino acid is valine, which is V, or very simple at the moment. Now again, this is pretty similar to alanine, it's just methyl groups. Draw our backbone. here and so it's the same as alanine with the methyl group but there's two more branching off from it and a good way to remember this as it says here is that this kind of shape is v-shaped so we just think v-shaped So far, I know this might look it kind of gets in the way, but we have three. Oh no, we'll leave it to leave it to alphas. Okay, so far we have glycine, alanine, and valine. Sorry if it seems like I'm rehashing things over and over again, but this is just to really cement it in my own brain. I'm really forgetful for, with these sort of things, so going over it over and over and over again as I as I kind of add to things like this um, helps me remember the next one it's kind of a two in one package this it's it's leucine and isoleucine um, let's just draw out leucine it's about like that with L uh, and leucine again is uh, quite similar uh, to valine in that the only difference is a single, another a, a methyl extension from the alpha carbon. Uh, so let's just draw these in. So you have your CH coming away from the alpha carbon. Uh, in this case it's CH2 because there's just one bond coming away from it. And then you have the exact same thing, the kind of the V of the valine. Oh, let's actually just do um, yep, so you can see that the only difference is that this is just an extra methyl group added on. Really simple. Extra methyl from valine. I suppose. Uh, and the next one is isoleucine. And as the name suggests, this is an isomer of leucine. So it's, you know, in terms of its, uh, what do they call it? There's some form of structure. It's chemical structure, I guess it's called, or something like that. That's probably wrong. Um, 
they are identical, but they, they do differ in uh, their the kind of structural form. I is its shorthand. And so the only difference is the position of one of the methyl groups. So we draw out the standard structure again. Methyl. Oh, not methyl. Carboxylic. With the amino group. And then, so this is this small difference. For isoleucine, you have your CH rather than C2H. CH2 even. Uh, coming off from that. is a methyl group, and then you have your next two. So it's just kind of switched around a bit. The only difference is that, so if we go into a leucine, the only difference is that this is attached there. And so obviously then you need to just add hydrogen ions and remove them from from certain positions to, to kind of obviously give them all four bonds that they need. Uh, yeah, so the only difference is yeah, that just moves there. Um, and Technically, other than it moving here, which would make it a big long four chain, four carbon chain, uh, that's really the only position it can move to. So, I guess you just think, well, where does it go? Well, it can only go there because it's not going to be one long four carbon chain. Just remember that, I suppose. Uh, so yeah, it, I'm guessing. So here it's saying a lopsided valine, which I think is a little bit confusing. Oh no, I guess it's not, because I guess, actually, I suppose isolune is probably more similar to, to valine than, ice, than than leucine, you know, in structural form. Because the addition is, is that, it kind of slots in there. But again, just say, yeah, similar to valine, same chemical. Which they call a chemical formula, I suppose. Is that, I don't know if that's exactly the right terminology, but anyway. To leucine isomer. Okay, that's different because it looks like it's particularly important, which it not necessarily really is. Okay, give that a little highlight. Okay, so we have glycine, alanine, valine, leucine, and isoleucine. <coughs> Already a quarter of the way through. Which is good. So, number six, and the last aliphatic, uh, the last, yeah, the last aliphatic uh, amino acid uh, is proline. Which... From what I remember, from what I'm looking at, proline is one of the five both ketogenic and glucogenic amino acids. Useful piece of information, that sort of thing I'd get questioned on in my paper, so I don't know if that's useful for you, whoever's watching this. Okay. Anyway, for, just out of interest for those who did want to know that, glucogenic. And ketogenic amino acids goes by the acronym, is that right? PIT with three T's, which is proline, isoleucine. Ah, is it isoleucine? Must be. It's the only I I can think of. Threonine, tyrosine, and tryptophan. These are all, yeah, both glucogenic and ketogenic. Whatever. Hopefully that's of use to someone. Okay, proline. Now this is slightly different. It has a ring structure to it, a five carbon ring structure. So this is very different to all the other ones. And perhaps that's a good way of remembering it, which is it's kind of the the special looking aliphatic uh, aliphatic amino acid. Let's draw these in. And it is wait. I've drawn that too quickly. Is that really how it's structured? Let me have a look on a different. 
different thing. Proline. Apologies about this. Hmm, it is okay. Interesting. Interesting. It, it's structured completely. Well, not completely differently. I guess it's just how it is uh, structurally. It still has all the properties. Still has an amino group. Still has a hydrogen group. Still has a carboxylic group. So, yep. Yeah, okay. So it's structured like this. Um, I'm actually going to draw the whole thing in in white just just to make it easy for myself. So you have a five. It's not five carbon. It's just a five atom ring uh, with nitrogen. That's one of the components. The other, one, other four being, I guess it's a four carbon ring with a nitrogen. Uh, so that's the amino group. And then off from that is your carboxylic group. Um, now I'm going to draw it like this because I don't really know how it works. Perhaps you can get a second one and then that becomes positive and then you can remove that and it becomes negative. I don't know, but I'm not going to do that because nobody says here. How about I don't be lazy, I just look it up. Yes, it does. So, let's do this. NH2. Positive and negative. And then, obviously, here you have your hydrogen. Okay, sorry about that. I just have to pop and get some water. So... Uh, yeah, obviously this is the kind of functional group part of proline. Uh, so yeah, I mean, that's quite a good rem way of remembering it. So the functional group really is just four carbons in a line, really. So you have, if, the, if you see this as its structure, then really it's just carbon, 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 carbon. So then you come around to, and this one's common bonded to this. That's really, it's four carbons in a line. It's really, it's not particularly different from isoleucine. This carbon is bonded here, and then that is bonded to the nitrogen. I obviously don't know the exact pathway in which that occurs, but that's the way I'm going to look at it. So, four plus nitrogen, one nitrogen ring structure, four carbon straight chain R group. And as those are all of the aliphatics, is there some sort of way? What, what have we got? We've got, uh, we have glycine, we have alanine, valine, we have leucine, we have isoleucine, uh, and we have proline. So I always like to form some sort of acronym to remember this, so we're talking about aliphatic uh, amino acids. What, what word can we can we make from this, even if it's sort of a made-up one? Hmm. Well, gavlip. slightly rude one. I'm not going to say it. It's definitely the way that I'm going to remember it. <laughs> um, it's the, the, the rude one that I've just thought of is the only one I can think about now and it's the one that I'm certainly going to remember it by. You look at those letters. G-A-V-L-I-P and you form your own kind of acronym uh, if you think of a good one, put it in the uh, in the comments. I've got mine. Whatever you find is easiest for you. Okay. So now let's use the red line, and we'll move on to the next set, determined by the by the properties. Obviously, so the next ones are the self-containing ones. There's only two. I already knew these ones, thankfully. Uh, we'll just put. Yeah, we'll start with seven. This sulfur containing. Now they always ask, they always um, question us on these ones. 
That's the only reason I know these ones off by heart. There's methionine and cysteine. Technically, not particularly different in structure from the aliphatics, and I think that's a, that's a good point to remember. They are quite similar, especially methionine, with respect to proline, really, I suppose, other than its ring structure. Uh, so I'll draw it out methionine. So they've called it here sulfur hydroalanine, and I guess that's because the only difference is an extra sulfur here in there, where it's then attached to the hydrogen. The only difference is alanine. Think, think alanine plus sulfur, then I suppose. Uh, yeah, that's a cool way of, of looking at it. Um, so yeah, sulfur. suggesting that methionine can't do that. I guess it is. I didn't know that. Methionine disulfide bridge. Okay, the next group we're going to look at is the aromatics. Uh, I've always seen or thought that aromatic meant that there was a 
a ring, a carbon ring structure, six carbon ring structure. I'm just going to check to make sure that that is true. I'm just giving you some misinformation. Aromatic. Aromatic. Yeah, it says ring, so I'm just going to... way to describe them. Okay. So the first one, or the ninth amino acid. How many are there? There are one, two, three. I think after these ones, I'll stop it, stop the video, and then we'll make another one. So it will be two parts. The first eleven, and then the last nine. Didn't actually say at the start, but there are in fact 20. I think that's relatively well known though. The first aromatic amino acid we're going to look at is phenylalanine. Phenylalanine. Uh, and as the name suggests, I suppose it's just alanine with a phenyl group attached. Just F for F. So we'll draw the backbone. And the R group is just like alanine, is just a normal methyl group attached. Attached to this is a, uh, a phenyl group. nicely as I can. There you go. Phenolally. Okay. So yeah, we'll just write Phenol. Just reading what it's saying here. It's saying, no, it's aromatic. The Y in phenol can remind you which three amino acids begin with T. Ah, I see what it's saying. That's written, written very, very oddly. Um, so, as long as you remember the first one, phenol alanine, which is quite easy because the phenol group, as in phenol alanine plus phenol, that should give you the first one. giveaway. Well the next two are, and we'll just write them both in just so we can see what we're talking about, the Y that we, that we have for these ones. Let's quickly highlight one of these. Phenylalanine. The Y in phenylalanine gives you a clue to the next two, which is the T's, both of which have Y in them, tyrosine and tryptophan. Uh, three need, no, no, that doesn't match. So, tyrosine, which is a T, no it's not, which is a Y, and trip. Easy peasy. So the difference between uh, phenylalanine and tyrosine is quite small. Uh, you have this, obviously. Come on, use your brain, Andy. And the only difference, it's the exact same structure. So yeah, you have the methylene group, and then you have much. Just gonna. same as phenylalanine except there is it's it, and that's what it says here it says it's a hydroxylated phenylalanine nice 
nice and simple. Hydroxylated phenol alanine. Lovely. Okay, and it's you know the Y of phenol. Easy peasy. Uh, tryptophan. Now this is a quite complicated looking uh, structural formula for it. Um, we do the best to make it look presentable. Once again, there is a withdrawal out. So same backbone and then Obviously, because we're going to be attaching to an aromatic group, we obviously need a group like this in between. So CH2. And then that attaches to... It's a kind of a double ring structure. So, first of all, you have a, a five ring structure with a nitrogen in it, which is not to do with the... It's not going to look very good. So that looked really terrible. Yeah, but I'm going to carry on anyway. And then that attaches. Sorry, if I say that was not to do with uh, the standard amino group. This is another amino group attached to it. Let's just draw it like this. It's going to look, look a little bit funky. But then we have our uh, the aromatic group there. This is a double bond here. And that is it. It looks a little bit complicated, but I guess it isn't really that complicated. The only difference between this and phenylalanine, think of phenylalanine, and you'll obviously think of it because that's how you're getting the tryptophan in the first place, the Y of the phenylalanine. It's the CH2 of the R group is attached to a four, or should I say, one, two, three, four, yeah, a four carbon ring before it's attached to the standard phenol group. Um, it's calling it a phenol group. I actually thought a phenol group was one that was attached to an alcohol. Yeah, that, I'm just reading off what it says for, for, for phenylalanine. I thought phenol was obviously, well, just by the name, it sounds like. Okay, right, I'm going to correct that. This document I'm using isn't actually right. This here, this thing is obviously not a phenol group because there's no oxygen attached to it. This is a phenol group. This is just a standard, they call it a methyl ring or something. What do they call that? What happens if I put in phenol? without I don't know what you call that is it just a methyl ring or something no well you know these six carbon ring things it's one of those anyway the difference being between phenylalanine and tryptophan is that you have this four plus NH, yep, just NH, uh, with a double, double bond in the carbon, just what, well, I mean, you'd be able to figure that out anyway, because you know that this, that's not going to be attached to two hydrogens, um, not a double bond, um, yeah, that's the only difference from, from, uh, from phenylalanine.
three. Oh, that's all. The, that's all the aromatic. All the aromatic amino acids done. Let's highlight tyrosine and tryptophan. So, just to go over the six aliphatic are glycine, which is the most simple. Alanine, the next most simple with a with a methyl group. A valine, which is you know, the V structure. Leucine, which is very simple, just an added uh, methyl group in between the V of valine. Isoleucine, the same as leucine, uh, but just an isomer. And proline, the last aliphatic, which is a four carbon straight chain switched around into forming a ring with the nitrogen, the amide group. The two sulfur containing amino acids, we have methionine, which is important because that's the start. Uh, it's coded for the start codon. Um, it's the start amino acid. Uh, that's obviously sulfur containing, but it doesn't form sul disulfide bridges with itself or other sulfur containing because its sulfur is in the middle of two methyl groups in a four long chain with three carbons. Um, I've written that it's similar to proline. Uh, yes, which I guess it is because it's it's the ring of the proline. The third carbon is replaced with the with the sulfur, and cysteine is important because that's what forms disulfide bridges because it's sulfide group is at the end. It's, I've written sulfur hydro because obviously it's the same as alanine, which is just a methyl group, but replacing in between the third hydrogen on that methyl methyl group is a sulfur with its own hydrogen. Um, methionine is incredibly hydrophobic, cysteine less so. And then you have your three aromatics, there's only three, all of which must have the aromatic ring, phenylalanine. That's the first one to remember. It's the easiest because it says it in the name that it's a, that it's, it's a phenyl group in it. Maybe that's why they wrote phenyl in the thing, uh, in the document I'm writing. It's not phenyl, it's um, just an aromatic ring. Um, and think of alanine plus the ring. Easy peasy. Then the Y in the phenol should give you a clue to the next two, or the last two of the uh, aromatic rings, which is tyrosine and tryptophan. Uh, so the T's from that, and the one the T's with Y in it, so not three in tyrosine and tryptophan. Uh, tyrosine uh, is just a hydroxylated phenylalanine. I've written that, uh, yes, because it's just, it will think that is a phenol group. It's a phenol group attached to uh, alanine. That's the difference. <laughs> so we're just writing that as well. If I'm actually getting wrong, anything wrong here, please let me know. Phenol. Yeah, just write phenol. It's like phenol alanine <laughs> rather than just phenol alanine. Anyway, uh, yeah, and I've just said that with the Y. And then tryptophan, the last one. is the double ring kind of structure. So it's the same as uh, phenylalanine, except on before it attaches to the uh, the aromatic ring, it attaches to a four carbon with a nitrogen ring first. Okay, easy peasy. There we go, those are the first 11 amino acids, aliphatic, sulfur containing, and aromatic amino acids. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you found this useful. Uh, please feel free to let me know if there's a way I could have improved explaining these in any way. But yeah, thanks very much for watching.